Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back to another video. Today I will be showing you tips and ideas on altars to be as simple as you like or as extravagant as you like, all ending with a tour of my altar. So sit back, relax and keep on watching. An altar is typically a space you can go to with the intent that you will practice your craft, a space you feel comfortable and yourself. You may feel like you don't even need an altar at all, and I agree, do whatever feels right for you and your craft. If you decide you want to make an altar, it can be as simple or as complex as you'd like it to be, and above all else, personal to what resonates with you. For example, it could be a box, a shelf, desk, room, garden, or even your whole house. Basically anything you'd like it to be. My altar started with a simple box that I kept on top of my wardrobe and within this box I kept a book, tea lights and a pen and it stayed like this for many years. I transported this box to friends homes into my garden and used it in my room, setting it up when I did rituals which were moon rituals and spirit guide meditations. I felt getting this box down helped me get into the mindset of calm and a built up energy with the items inside and that helped me manifest what I was doing. And even now, these simple items are the most used items in my craft, so please don't feel like you need to go out and buy loads of things. My collection did grow, however, when I got drawn to certain pieces of nature on walks. I then changed my altar to be set up on a glass tray. Glass can also represent earth, as it was once sand, so a great magnifier of energy when I set up my altar. Over the years, I got more and more interested in items, especially when I found a local crystal shop as it grew quite a bit. The box became very heavy, so I invested in this wooden box, which I made over to suit my personality. And I was able to organize everything within it so I could pick and choose what I wanted every time I got this box out. What I liked about it is that it had a surface on top so I could display all of my items on top of the box or I could just simply work inside the box and build up the energy that way. When I moved out, my dream was to build a space that was a lot larger than my box, a space that used to be my bureau. So without further ado, let me give you the grand tour. Hello Enchanted Ones and I hope you enjoyed that little evolution of my altar and I hope you kind of found a few tips for yourself. So now I'm going to be showing you what my altar looks like today. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen what it looks like in my bureau but what you don't know is this whole space that I'm in now I see it as my altar because not only do I practice at my bureau but majority of the time I will find myself just sitting here and connecting with nature. I actually love to come down in the mornings and have my morning tea whilst looking outside and doing meditations here in the morning so it's a really kind of special spot to me especially because I can look outside and see like the birds and the squirrels and things like that. So one of the first things that you'll see when you come into my altar is my book of shadows and doesn't it just look amazing there? I didn't want to hide it away in my altar just because I'm really proud of how it turned out. I find it a really good conversation starter. So <laughs> another thing that I have is my tree. This tree was made in one of my videos last year. With each season, I aim to change it up to the season. So at the moment it has blossom on from my spring video, but it's gonna have leaves on it soon. So I aim to make those when it's summer. I just love keeping everything up to date with the seasons to keep me inspired and just to keep me connected to what's going on outside when I'm inside. So let me show you my bureau. 
So here we are at my bureau. One of the reasons why I love having my altar as a bureau is because I can keep it hidden, especially because I have clients that, that come round and it's just a really personal space to me. When I open it, I literally see it as what goes on inside of here is literally dumped into there. So yeah, I just don't really like a lot of people going through it and being like, oh, what's this, what's this, what's this? But obviously I'm willing to share it with you guys because I know you hopefully will appreciate it and my craziness. <laughs> I have quite a few antiques. The newest one I have is this beautiful antique display case, which I found in an antique shop. I also have this lovely set of drawers that I found in another antique shop. And I just feel like bringing antiques into my space just continues their energy. So first of all, let me show you my crystal cabinet. Here we have the bottom shelf of the crystal cabinet and it's filled with a lot of crystals for my sacral chakra and my creativity but also things I've found within nature and beaches and things like that and it's actually really random stories as to why I liked these items. This crescent moon drew itself out to me when I was on a beach in Devon but my sister also told me it looks like a toenail so I'm not too sure about my thoughts on it anymore but I like like to think of it as a crescent moon as well as this white stone here i just feel like it reminds me of a mini egg please don't judge me but and this one here just reminded me of a piece of halloumi cheese but <laughs> i just love finding crystals that i can resonate with and bring home and it just gives me a nice little memory of the holiday so up here i have made a shrine to myself here i have a picture of myself when i was a little girl in my little ballerina costume a lot of crystals to do with a self-love rose quartz and amethyst lovely little dried roses and fluorite i just feel looking at this reminds me that that little girl there was me and is me now and it helps me to remind myself of my inner child and my love and beauty and just how I want to forever be in the moment like that little girl was. So up here I have quite a lot of collections that I've collected in the woods and also little spell jars. So for example I have here in this bottle little fur sticks that I've snapped and these fur sticks are from my favourite place, the Secret Swamp. This one I made in my self-love video. I am absolutely in love with it. It's usually by my bed. And just a few things that drew themselves out to me in nature. My newest favourite find was actually this beautiful dried hydrangea that I found in my mum's garden. And doesn't it just look like little fairy wings? I'm absolutely obsessed and I can't wait for more dried things to come around this year. Around my cabinet I have items that actually represent the elements and you'll be surprised with what represents what elements because there are a lot of things that can resonate with one. For example I have a few fairies dotted around my beautiful fairy here and also this one from my childhood. Both symbolise air and freedom and I love that idea because a fairy is freedom and air and so light. Over here on this side we have my terrarium. This terrarium probably will represent earth, air and water. It's actually doing really really well. I mean the initial moss looks like it's died but it's growing new moss and some sort of fungi. Pretty cool. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I love having this at my altar. And to represent water, of course I just have a little water around. I've got this beautiful crystal bottle. I love this, I use it to water my plants. And to represent fire, I have a few very low vibration crystals like carnelian and also obsidian. The last thing I have which I want to show you is this feather pen which I used to use for writing but since then it's become my cat's favourite toy. So I just leave this here until he wants to play with it. So there is the top of my altar, so let me take you inside.
So welcome to the inside of my altar. There's a lot going on in my head, as you can see. <laughs> the first thing you'll probably be noticing is it's a little bit dirty and it's kind of got wax and paint all over it. It's clean, but it's just, I don't feel the need to repaint it every two minutes because it's lived in. It looks like it's been used a lot and that's what I love about my altar. So let me first talk you through why everything is like it is. First thing you'll see is my candles either side and I've actually got the inspiration from a Wiccan altar to do this. So I have a white candle and a black candle and the reason why this resonated with me is because white and black are the complete opposite frequencies and they can represent balance but also the white can represent the sun and femininity and black can represent the moon and masculinity. I think it's just a perfect symbolization and energy for balance because when I open my altar I want to feel content with myself and the universe so that is why I've set it out like that. Down here I have a little crystal shelf. I made this crystal shelf last year in one of my videos and I love it so much. Whatever I'm inspired by, I change the crystals up in it just to help my mood and just to kind of go with the seasons again. So at the moment it has citrine in it to help with my creativity and my sacral chakra, but I'll also change these up for the seasons and the Sabbath and just to kind of, again, keeping me inspired. And it's just fun to decorate it, I think. Over here we have my offerings pot. Now this is a citrine bowl and in it I've got a bird's nest that I made from sticks and within that all of the things that I have gathered. So for example, I really don't have the heart to put some of these things I find in nature just in my garden waste bag. So I put them in here. So I have, I have quite a lot of flowers from my garden. I have the daisies from the daisy chain I made in my Beltane video and once these are all dry what I'll do is I'll go to my favourite place within the wood, the fairy's den and I'll create like a cute little ritual where I'll let go of the items either by putting them in the stream or throwing them in the air. It's just a really sweet ritual I find to give back to nature further. Down here I have two wands, the first being a wand that I made in a video again last year and it's to do with balance as you've got obsidian and clear quartz on either side and it's really fun to kind of flick these crystals in whichever direction if you feel like you need to take away negativity or enhance your positivity. It's a really great fun wand and I also have a wand that I found a long long time ago which is a fur stick. This it's probably one of the first things I ever found whilst on my journey. It's just such a beautiful memory to me now. So in the middle of everything, I have my Book of Shadows. I love it being here because it's kind of centered within all the energy of my altar. Now this is my second book of shadows. It's more of a personal book to me, so I probably won't show much within this book where the other one is kind of, I made it for my videos. I overall just love the way this looks. It's just so pleasing and satisfying to my eye, whereas your altar might be completely opposite. It might be completely white and minimal. Yeah, if you want to know what's going on in my head, it's this. <laughs> I have a few antiques and they're not from antique shops, they're actually from my grandma and my mum, just things that I really liked when I grew up and I cheekily asked them if I could have them and to my surprise they didn't even like these items so I'm glad they're safe with me now. <laughs> my first item is this beautiful letter opener surprisingly that is a sword shape. This actually can also represent air at your altar if you didn't know. This is a great memory for me and now it's just really fun to open my letters in the most dream way. <laughs> I also have another item from my grandma and it is a pencil sharpener. So basically what you do is you put the pencil in the hole there, the actual top bit, that's where you wind it around and then the actual sharpenings will go in this box here. It doesn't work and it hasn't worked for a long time but 
it's just really lovely to continue the energy my grandma built up with it to now when it's in my altar just nice to have a generational items in there and the last thing is this really sweet paperweight i have not seen anything like this on my antique finds and it's actually my mum's she really didn't like it because of the red inside but I think it just really adds to it and makes it pop the things this dandelion must have seen in its lifetime it's just amazing to me again it's very nostalgic to me because I saw it when I was younger speaking of things that remind me of my childhood I actually have this sweet little box that I made last year but within it a lot of items from my childhood. I decided to put this box together because just being nostalgic makes me so happy and I don't often open this box but when I do open it it's because I'm I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Sometimes I feel quite overwhelmed with life and just pressures and things like that and I feel like I need to be brought back to a simpler time. So when I open this box and see all these things from my childhood, it just makes me remember that the simple things in life are the best things in life and really helps me to put things into perspective. So for example, I have this button. It's just the tiniest little button with a cat on it but it just brings me sheer joy because it just reminds me of this little cardigan I had with this button on it. It's as simple as that really. Also on that shelf I have my tarot cards, Pagan Cats, which I've mentioned before and this little box I made that inside of it has these beautiful small crystals. I actually asked for these crystals when I went to my local crystal shop. They were actually just really small crystals that fell out and fell off of bigger crystals. So it might be really worth asking because these really helped me out with my crafts. So there's that. Down here we have my feather, which I honestly do not use. It's really tricky to use this, but I do find myself writing with this pen more than anything. It is a stick that is also a pen. One of my favourite finds actually and it's in a pot of my little gatherings that I find that I collect within the woods. Down here this is my pentacle. It was actually one of the first things I ever made for my altar. I think it's of course a great symbol to have at your altar as it represents earth, air, fire, water and the divine. There's just a few other odds and ends to show you. I have a compass at my altar. You never know when you need it if you're doing things like calling the corners and things like that. There's little bear. Again this is from a charity shop and I just love it. It's just a really sweet reminder of life is precious and we need to just continue our childhood through life basically. Over here I have my dried herbs and my dried rose petals and things like that. I find it's really difficult to use them because they look so beautiful. I keep a lot of things for memory's sake. I have this bits and bobs jar and in inside I have, it smells like, smells like sweet peas, <laughs> but inside I have items that honestly could just take me back to a particular summer or place and it's just so beautiful pressing flowers and keeping them in that way just to remember their memories. It's like sifting through a memory box. And speaking of which, underneath my book of shadows I do have more storage and within this box I have um, <laughs> loads more memories of just things. I just can't get rid of these things. I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to collecting memories because I want to hold on to them for as long as possible. So yes, these are things I don't know what to do with, but it's nice opening this box up and seeing all the memories. And just a few more things. I have this beautiful flower press that was gifted to me by my beautiful friend, Laura. So thank you so much. Laura. I cried when I opened this because it says the wildflowers of Ulwin Oak. And also in here I have my essential oils. I recently bought a diffuser and honestly I don't know what my life was like now without one because it's just so magical. My favourite essence though has to be Mei Chang. I absolutely love 
its lemon sherbet-y smell and this mixture of cinnamon is a really beautiful combination. I hope you enjoy that if you try it. And in this we have a bit of obsession of mine again. These are actually all gifted for my birthday by my friends and family who know me so well by the way, so thank you. And it's all these beautiful colours of candles. So whatever mood I'm in, I can have a candle that resonates with that mood. I think that was it. So that is my altar, but I love to still set my altar up in different places. For example, when I work outside, I love to have a slab of wood in which I will set up things and make a little altar out there if I want to. And I'm actually also thinking about making an altar on this old dead tree that's in my garden. So I'm really excited to show you when I make that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Basically, the moral of this video and the moral of the story I'm trying to tell you with what I went through is an altar could be completely, completely personal to you. Go with what resonates with you. Don't feel like you need to oblige to different rules. Like I said, you don't even need an altar at all if that's something you don't want to make. Don't feel like you need to have one. I also have collected all of these things over years and years. A lot of the items I've had since childhood, so it's not something that you should feel pressure to go out and buy loads of things. It's just things that I am really obsessed with, so I love to put them in my altars. Please let me know what your altar's like and what your thoughts are on altars in the comments below. If you like any of the tips I've given you today, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on those too. Thank you so much for watching this video, Enchanted Ones. And as always, it means so much that you're watching this video and are here on this journey with me. All of my love, Arlowin.